Here at the Houston Zoo's Birds of the World, we have made our way inside of the South American Wetlands Aviary. It's an immersive experience for zoo guests. In this beautiful aviary, you will see Chilean flamingos, roseate spoonbills, and other water birds. And what's really cool is the space was built around a registered historic tree sculpture created by an artist in 1926. While guests enjoy walking through the aviary, what they won't see is the investment the zoo made in building an avian conservation environment building behind the scenes, which gives them greater capacity to care for and breed birds, including some critically endangered species. The expertise the Houston Zoo team brings to animal care every day is immensely valuable, not just here in Houston, but to conservation partners abroad. That's why the veterinary team that traveled with Andy were called on to do some field training in one of the most exotic parts of Rwanda. In one of the oldest parts in all of Africa, wildlife runs free. Akagera National Park in Rwanda was founded in 1934 and has become a place where tourists can see many of the continent's most iconic animals. How many different types of birds are in the park? We have more than 500 species of birds. We are going to drive our park guide showed us a river forms a border between the park and the country of Tanzania. On the other side, in 2013, they fenced the park. When the fence went in to reduce human wildlife conflict just over a decade ago, some animals were left on the outside of the park. We are getting close to the park. Um, so this village, um, as you see, there is a lot of agriculture going on. You have these zebras out on farmland that are grazing on pastures that are for the farmer's cattle. And by coming out here and doing this type of field work, we are keeping these animals from being poached, from being caught in snares and injured uh, so that we can help the farmers and help the animals and get them into protected, a protected park in Akagera National Park. This week is actually for the training, but we thought we'd use this, this opportunity to train in the field as well. So yeah, we'll be with them. Oh, good. It takes much more than the veterinary team to pull off a wildlife intervention on this scale. We are part of the support team for the darting operation. Um, we are the manpower that will come in once the animal has been darted and gone down uh, to support the removal of that animal from there and getting it into the crate. I think we are going to walk down and everyone stay behind the, the hedges. Like, uh, so that we, we don't scare them. That is in, and Olivia is calling me to, okay. to tell me. Yes? Well, Olivier darted the zebra, um, and then David just ran out with a blindfold. So you can see that she's this one. So she's throwing classic signs of anesthesia taking effect here. She's high-stepping, her head is up, she's away from the group. She's acting like she doesn't really um, perceive everything around her. She's getting wobbly, and you can see that pink dart in her right hip. So isolated from the group, which is good. She didn't go very far. David, That's David. also good. So less than five minutes, she should be down. Animal is down, please. We, we have to go. The animal is down? Yeah. Yes. So yeah. we're working our way out to the darted zebra. Uh, you can see teams running in all directions to help. Time is of the essence. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Digital pulses are really good. Yes. Feet are in excellent condition. Okay, your so, antibiotics are in. It seemed so seamless from my perspective as an outsider. Yeah, that's great to hear that it seems so seamless because it can feel very chaotic. Um, so we're glad that it looks seamless. So when you have an animal go down under anesthesia, you want to make sure that they are okay before you start anything else. We use some new anesthetic monitoring equipment uh, that is new to the team that this is the first time that we've used it in the field, which is really exciting. It worked great. He just got um, blood from the facial sinus. Oh, you got it? Look yes. at that. That's good. Let's start loading the animal. After getting the first zebra into a vehicle for transport, the team immediately set their sights on darting another one. On the second zebra, they trained on the portable x-ray and ultrasound equipment. All right, six feet back, everyone. If you could step back one step and hold it out more in front of you. Yeah. Just hold down, it'll beep. 
There's water everywhere. There's no way around. It's through. Two, three, get it! Inside Akagera National Park, the zebras are kept in quarantine until they're cleared to release into the park. Two successful sedations, transports, and releases. But the team would go and do it again the next day, this time with a GoPro camera in the hands and on the head of Dr. Christine. Hello, I'm getting the camera set up. I'm going to put it on my head now. Do I want to dart? Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe. Hmm? I'm probably not a very good stalker. Yeah, you have to stalk them. Yeah, I'll, I can give it my best shot. I'm gonna dart him, Dale. Yeah. <laughs> Want me to try? A dart fired, but it didn't stick, and the zebras took off. It didn't stay in. No, I think it hit and bounced. So we're just loading up another dart here. It's hard to get close. The closer you are, the easier it is to take an accurate shot. And with the that, are, the camera the battery died just before they came up with a solution to get closer to the zebra. So they called a local guy with a motorcycle, a moto. A moto. A moto. A moto. Came over and he's like, get on. Like, All right, I'm going to get on this motorcycle. So we're in the mud on the motorcycle. The zebras are running. So we're going next to them. We've got the double barrel rifle with the dart inside, ready to go, charge, you know, and I'm like tapping him on the shoulders, like stop, no, right, you know, left, this way, this way, and then the zebra ran like sort of where the cows were, and then the zebra's like, oh, these cows, and like, oh, that's the moment, and I was able to get him. How'd it go today? It was good. A little bit challenging. Yeah. We ended up getting two. Before leaving, Dr. Olivier walked around the edge of the boma, trying to get a view of the zebra inside before we left for the night. <laughs> How do you feel about today? Yeah, I'm really feel good. Like, I'm, uh, I'm really happy that we able to move like four zebras to now in the park. I'm really happy for that. At the first time, they used to call other people from outside, and I'm now happy that Roland's are able to move like animal from outside the park and then get them here and safe. We have now uh, ultrasound, x-ray. We just need to be able to use them and then we do a great job more. Still ahead. This is incredible. How a sanctuary for cranes rescued from captivity is also helping birds in the wild. Plus, this is Motisi. She's a gray crowned crane, one of the most beautiful exotic birds in all of Africa. And she's about to be examined. Well, I almost always start with the head of the animal. But first, wake up with bird friendly coffee grown by farmers committed to preserving bird habitats. You can learn more and also find bird saving crafts you can do with your family on click2houston.com slash conservation.